Good morning and welcome to the Eden United Methodist live stream worship service. It's our ninth one. I counted yesterday. I probably shouldn't have. And we have a few more to go as our pause order for Western New York has been extended through June 13th. I want to invite you, if you received the bulletin by email, to, to look through the announcements uh, at your own pace, but I will share a few with you. We are doing a Zoom meeting every Wednesday at noon. The information will be emailed out each week to remind you if you are able to join either by phone or by video. We are still collecting those cleaning supplies. I will have a further announcement later in the week as to what we are doing with them. We are also continuing to clean the church, though, after this week's announcement that our pause order in Western New York is extended, we have a few more weeks. So I want to encourage you to look over the emails about how we are planning to clean the church, the areas that might need to be cleaned, and if you are capable of doing so, please give the office a call and schedule a time. The Women's Bible Study continues to meet by Zoom. There may be more offerings coming as we find ourselves in a continued time of social distancing and separation. We are collecting books for our library, which will be ready soon. And if you find yourself in need of an additional person to talk to, our Stevens ministers are still out there and caring for those in a time of need. If you find that you cannot tune in for our worship service at 11 a.m., we do rebroadcast, well, not rebroadcast, but we share each of the videos on our YouTube channel, which you can find through our main website and click on those. I'm hoping that I remembered everything, but I know I didn't. So just one more look to ensure. We have an all church meeting scheduled for Tuesday at seven o'clock. Check your email for the Zoom link. We're not gathering here. Check your email for the Zoom link. There will also be an SPRC meeting on Wednesday, uh, May 20th at 6.30. I almost said, if you have any other announcements, please share them. It's still there. I still remember what it's like to lead worship with you here with me. And then I looked up from the bulletin and I saw that that would not work. So instead of inviting you to share more announcements with each other, I'm going to invite you to join with me and Michelle as we sing to Tim and Matthew Schnoffer's uh, recording of Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, which if you have a hymnal at home is number 384. Visit us with us. 
And now I invite you to join with us in this morning's opening prayer. O God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. My name is Lori Motaf, and I will be reading part of this morning's scripture. May you be blessed as you give attention to the reading of God's word. We are reading from Acts chapter 17, verses 22 through 31, in the New International Version. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious, for as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship, and this is what I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man, he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Hi, church family. Cheryl Baum is here. Um, I have always followed the Lord. I was taught to do that in, in my upbringing. I was in the Catholic Church for a very long time. Um, I didn't always understand or agree with their teachings. So when I was older and had my own child, I left the Catholic Church and joined the Worldwide Church of God, where I opened a Bible for the very first time. Um, it was an amazing experience for me, and the thought that I could actually read God's words um, and put them into action and keep them in my heart and my mind and my life was really something to me. I will always hold him close. I will always believe in him and follow him. And um, I'm grateful that I did find the Worldwide Church of God, even though after 10 years of being there, they broke apart over doctrine. Um, I joined the United Methodist Church and found the people to be very open and willing to help me along on my path. And I, here I am years later, and I'm still here in the United Methodist Church. But the Lord will always have a very great part in my life. Um, he's it. He's number one in my life and always will be. It's sad to me to believe that other people, you know, who don't have him, gosh, it seems like such a hopeless existence. Well, that's my testimony. I hope everyone's safe, and hopefully we'll be able to get together soon. Bye-bye.
microphone died. All right, here we are. We're back, I promise. We'll see how much I mess up this microphone, though, because I'm not used to this one. How is everybody? I mean, you know, I keep thinking that the reason we can bring these broadcasts to you isn't just because uh, Mike Forrester up there in the booth is working diligently to go between video to video to video, but he also is running the soundboard, all the videos you watch. He, with Robin, put together our media shout programs that bring you all of the words. There's a lot of stuff that goes into the process of, of live streaming for you, and still, things can sometimes fall apart. And I know when he gets messages, that's because Laura is letting him know that something's not working right in the feed, so thank you. So we know that the microphone that I was using cut out. And thank you, Cher, for, uh, Char, for sharing your testimony with us. I do want to encourage anyone who is capable of recording themselves to let us know at the church office if you have a desire to share your testimony. I would like to continue to include that, uh, those within our worship service. And I do have a few folks that keep telling me, um, not this week. Well, maybe next week for you. If you're watching, you know who you are. First Peter. Chapter 3, I'm just going to take some liberty here because, you know, we're off script, sort of, and start the reading at verse 8. It's supposed to start at verse 13, but as I was preparing my sermon last night, I realized I needed to start at verse 8. So this is 1 Peter chapter 3, beginning with verse 8. Finally, all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. So turn off social media. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing, because to this you were called, so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever among you would love life and see good days must keep your tongue from evil and your lips from deceitful speech. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Now verse 13, which is where we planned to start. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? What even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their hearts, their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. It is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body but made alive in the spirit. In that state he went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirit to those who were disobedient long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also, not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience towards God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ who has gone into heaven and is, at the right, and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Will you pray with me? Gracious and holy God, as we seek to learn more about you and all that you have done for us, May our ears be open to hear what you would have us learn. 
May our hearts be open to receive the Holy Spirit. And Lord, may you continue to transform us. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So, like I said at the beginning of the broadcast, if you missed this piece, this is our ninth Sunday of live streaming. I did some counting last night, and and honestly, it was because I was just a little bit discouraged after hearing that we needed to stay in pause mode for longer than other parts of New York State. I'm sure some of you are feeling some of that as well, but I counted, and my count may be off, so you can disagree with the exact number of days that things have been going on, but I wrote down what I counted just to be sure. I counted that we have been in 56 official days of the pause order. Now, as a parent of school-aged children, what I can tell you is you need to add seven more days to that. And that is because here in Erie County, school stopped officially March 16th. So that's a total of, and that's only if I counted right, and please don't, uh, don't, don't, don't take this as literal God's truth or anything. I just counted on a calendar, and I'm good at skipping things. So I came up with the number of 63 days that we have not been able to see one another, to worship together with one another, if you've been following those protocols for separation from family and friends. Now, if it wasn't clear before I started giving you the numbers and the number of weeks that we have not been in fellowship, physical fellowship with one another, you might have noticed I'm tired. I know it's sunny. It's beautiful. I went for a walk and a bike ride yesterday because I was so grateful it wasn't snowing in May. It snowed in May. Could we add any more distress to what is already a stressful situation? I just want to ask God why. If you're with me, say amen. But we're here in this fashion of live streaming worship. And I hope that whatever it is that God inspired me to write last night might come out. And it might be of inspiration to you. Now, one of the things I know about being in isolation with my family for 63 days, and for us, that is what it has been, for 63 days of isolation is that we've gotten to know one another in a more, in a clearer way. We got to know one another probably in ways we didn't want to. We've really gotten to know one another. I think that we have perfected the art of getting under each other's skin so well that we can even call each other on it in ways we couldn't have before. Now, I'd say, can I get an amen for anyone else who's feeling that? But alas, you're not here. Now, when I read 1 Peter, what I know about 1 Peter is that this is a letter to new Christians who are trying to understand how to live out their faith how to live differently in a world that does not respect or understand what it is that they believe. And that what what Peter reminds them of is that their lives are meant to be an example before the world. Now, is your life an example in your quarantined house? Now, here's the thing. I asked that question, and I know the answer for myself is no. I wish it were. Honestly, every time I've been reading through 1 Peter to prepare for sermons, I've been convicted that I need to think more about seeking to be right with God and seeking to be holy as God is holy, just as Peter reminded the people he was writing this letter to in the very, oh, maybe it was the second chapter, I've lost track. I think it's the first. But he reminds the people that, one, they are to be holy as God is holy. Two, that their citizenship is not of this world, but it is of heaven. And three, we are to be examples. Our lives are to be examples of what it means to be loved and forgiven by God. Now again, I tell you this knowing that my children can tell you stories I don't want them to. I tell you this knowing that my spouse can tell you stories I don't want him to. I can remember 
a few years ago that there was a study, and I'm sure that this is an adage in most of our households at this point, that we are not our best selves when we're tired. We tend to be crankier, shorter fuses, just not our best self. And I know the longer this time of isolation and separation drags on, we probably are not our best selves. But what Peter reminds us today, and what Peter was trying to tell the people of the early church in times past, is that we serve a forgiving and loving God who, in spite of who we are, despite the things that we do and say, continues to say that he wants to work through us. So what does that mean for us in our separated places, in our crankiness, in our tiredness? Well, the rule doesn't change, to be honest. It's still that we are to be holy as God is holy. We are, are, we are to seek to be in right relationship with God, to serve God in all that we do, so that our lives are a witness to the world around us. As I was reading First Peter, I said, see, get off social media. See, if you go on social media, you can find all sorts of examples of how we don't love one another, how we repay insult with insult. And instead of blessing, we offer, well, the opposite. But what First Peter reminds us is those who are following God, as those who love God, as those who are seeking to serve God in every moment of our lives, that we are to love one another, be compassionate, humble, we are not to repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, we, on the contrary, repay evil with blessing. Because to this you were called, so that you may inherit a blessing. Then there's this whole thing about watching your tongue. I'd say in our contemporary world, watch your fingers on a keyboard. But there are so many places and ways in which we can turn away from our relationship with God in this time of separation and stop serving God, not only in our individual lives, but in our presence within the world. Goodness, there are plenty of examples currently of people who claim to be Christian, saying and doing all sorts of things that are contrary to what Peter says. I mean, Peter says, avoid deceitful speech, turn from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it. Can the world say that's what the church is doing right now? Or do we find ourselves thinking we can say whatever we want to? We are always supposed to be mindful of the words that come from our mouths. We are always supposed to seek to be in right relationship with God, to seek forgiveness from others when we have harmed them, to offer forgiveness when others have harmed us. This is the way we are supposed to live, and it is in this way that we become the great defense, the great example for the Christian faith. One of my favorite verses is in this text. It's verse 15. It's probably not 15, but we'll, we'll try it. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who seeks, to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have. Always be prepared to give an answer. Always be prepared to have a defense, is actually what it really says, of the Christian faith. I can remember when I first came into the Christian faith, one of the biggest things at the time in the 90s was apologetics. Know how to defend your faith. Make sure that you know scripture well enough that you can quote it at somebody when they say something anti-Christian. What I can tell you is that that is, well, it's a bad example. Honestly, it's unhelpful because we are speaking to a world that does not use the same language we use, that says things, but they don't mean the same things. We're living in a world that is biblically ignorant, and honestly, a church that is biblically ignorant. So how is it that we are to give that defense that God asks us to give? By the way we live. 
Our lives are meant to be the primary example, but that does not mean that we don't listen to what our faith teaches us. We can't defend what we don't know. We can't share what we don't know, don't understand. I think Paul's example from the reading in Acts today about the unknown God is a perfect way in which we are to engage a world that does not share in our beliefs or understanding, and that is to find a common thread. And I was thinking about what some of those common threads were last night. But I was also thinking about the fact that when we use biblical verses to try and explain to the world what it is that we believe, it's like speaking a foreign language to them, because it's not their language. As Christians, we are called not only to be holy as God is holy, to be examples of God's love and light at work in this world, to be his hands and feet. My goodness, that's a tall task, but we do it with the Holy Spirit's help. It is to understand what the rest of the world believes, too. Honestly, it's so that we can speak to it in the way that Paul speaks to those who are listening to him in Athens. He uses the attributes of God or of the faiths that he understood to explain what it is that we believe. We live in a world that tells us that people are good. We live in a world that tells us that people are good. What our faith tells us is that each and every human being is created with the image of God within them. If we live in a world and we talk with people who tell us that people are good, we can say, sure, when God created, he called it good, but we also know that we do bad things to one another, that we harm one another, and that when we do those things, we call, as Christians, we call that sin. And so we understand that that image that was created within us is broken and marred by sin. There are so many different ways that we can communicate the Christian faith. But like I said, we need to understand more fully what it is we believe in order to give that defense. Honestly, to be that example. Now again, if you're like me, 63 days into self-isolation with just your family, you know your life is probably not the best defense. So... If I'm just preaching to a camera, which by the way I am, and none of the rest of you understand this experience I'm talking about, then hear this. When we fall, God is there. God is there to call us back into right relationship with him, to seek to be in right relationship to him, to be holy as he is holy, which means to acknowledge the things that we have done that are hurtful and harmful, not only to ourselves, but to God and to the people that we have hurt and we have harmed. By the way, I think this time of isolation is the perfect time to actually get back to that right relationship with God because what else are we going to do? So let us covenant together to spend time on our relationship with God. Seeking not only to be made holy as God is holy, but to be not only in right relationship with God, but in right relationship with the people in our household. Let us covenant to read scripture together in our households, to set aside a prayer, to set aside a prayer time in our house, households. So that when we come out of this mess and we try to figure out how to live in to the world that now exists, which will not be the one that we left, we can do it as those who are like-minded, who seek not only to be in right relationship with God, but as Peter says, those who are like-minded, who are sympathetic, who love one another and are compassionate and humble who do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult, who repay evil with blessing, who seek peace and pursue it, who are those examples that God has called us to be, even when we mess up. Even when we mess up. So my question that I continue to ask myself, that I'll continue to ask us as the body of Christ in Eden, New York, 
how are our lives an example of the God that we follow? And if they are not, what do we need to do to enter into right relationship with God and with the people in our lives? What do we need to do to be the body of Christ in our households and in the world once we step back into it? And I think the underlying, I think ultimately, what we need to do is turn to 1 Peter and hear again this encouragement to love, to offer compassion, to be humble. To love, to offer compassion, to be humble, to not repay evil with evil and insult with insult. To repay evil with blessing and to seek peace and pursue it. When we do these things, we are transformed by the love of God. We are made new by the love of God. And we are sent out as the best example and the best defense of the Christian faith. Amen. I'm going to encourage us now to, if you have a hymnal, to grab that and we'll sing Wonderful Words of Life. That's number 600. I want to invite us to a time of prayer with God and with each other. I encourage you to share with one another on the, on the Facebook live feed whatever prayers, concerns that you have. I will look them over later. I also want to encourage you that if you have something that happens during the week, I'm looking for the right piece of paper, if you have something that happens during the week to, uh, that you would like prayed for during the service, prayed for during our meeting on, on uh, Wednesdays, if you're able, email it. If you're not able, call the office, leave a message, 
I, I said last week, I don't have my wonderful helpers that I miss who write notes, write them, actual handwritten notes in cursive, and thankfully I'm old enough that I learned to write and read cursive. I know some of you don't think that, but I am. I'm old enough to know that. But they would put those notes on the pulpit, which you can't see in this picture, and they would say things like, remember to make this announcement. So-and-so had surgery this week. I'm not capable of keeping track of all of those things, and if you send them individually to me, I'm not capable of keeping track of all of those things. But Robin writes me a list, and she prints it, and she puts it here on the music stand, and that way I have a reminder of your concerns because I do want to share them with those who are watching. And so I want to encourage you, again, if you're able, email them to the office or call them in, and that way they're going to one place, and then they go on this sheet and they come to me. So, I want to invite us into a time of prayer with God and with each other. Gracious and holy God, as we remain in this time of separation from each other, God, we ask that you would send a spirit of renewal upon each of our households that we would grow in our understanding of what it means to follow you, of how to serve you. And God, may we be humbled enough to seek forgiveness when we need your forgiveness and to seek the forgiveness of others when we have harmed someone. God, we know that you are a loving and forgiving God who has offered all that is necessary for us to live out the Christian faith here and now. And although our circumstances are different from what they were two months ago, we know that you are still God that you have called us, that you have loved us, that you have offered us your redeeming love. God, continue to transform us. Lord, we lift up all of those who find themselves separated while grieving, unable to say goodbye to loved ones, unable to hold funerals and memorial services. Lord, we know how important it is for us to gather together to offer hugs and compassion in person. And so, Lord, we lift up those who are unable to receive compassion in person. And we ask for your hand of mercy and comfort to be upon them. Lord, in your mercy... Hear our prayer. God, we continue to lift up our frontline workers, whether they be in hospitals or in our grocery stores. Lord, we ask for your protection upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, grant us the patience and perseverance necessary Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we also lift up celebrations. We ask for your blessing to be upon those who celebrate their birthdays this week. They all happen to be on the same day, according to the sheet. So on May 22nd, we lift up Jackie Wenlick, Doug Burry, and Doris Hadley, who all celebrate uh, an extra year of life. God, we ask for your blessing to be upon them. For your blessings, Lord, hear our praise. And God, as we remain in this time of pause, continue to remind us to turn to you, to seek you, to receive the forgiveness that you have offered through the sacrifice of your son Jesus on the cross, and to 
hold on to the hope offered in his resurrection. God, may each and every word that comes from our mouths be of service to your kingdom. And when it is not, may we be convicted. We ask all of this through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, praying as he taught us to. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I want to invite you now to give back to God from what God has blessed you with. And I tried to do this a couple of weeks ago and managed to not make it work. And that was to show you how long it takes to get out your phone if you're using a smartphone and, and you're not using it to watch the service. You can do this afterwards if that's the case. But go to the website and you will find three buttons that you can use to give back to God from whatever God has blessed you with. There's a button for Tithely which you need an account for, a button for PayPal, which you need an account for, and then a third option, which you do not need an account for. I'm going to encourage you, if you are unable to do any of those things, to continue to send your offerings by mail to the church. We are receiving mail. We are counting whatever comes in. I'm opening the Tithely app to see if I can actually make this work this time. I have it all set up to go to the Eden United Methodist Church, and I'm going to enter in what is my monthly, because I give monthly, offering to the church. And this one even has an option where you can just click cover the fees that are associated with this process for giving. And then I hit the button give, and it asks me if I really want to. I do. I really want to give to the church. And it says it didn't work, which means I'm going to go home and do it later. I thought you might find more technical glitches funny, but if that happens in your home, please keep trying until it works. Because God is using us and God is using this church to speak his word to the world in a different way, live streaming. And as those of us who believe, let us continue to pray for an end to this pandemic, because I forgot to add that one in there and I desperately want it to be done for people to find health again. But God continues to still work in and through us as his body. And so I encourage you to give so that we can give back to others. I can't remember what comes next right now. I'm tired today. I think we sing the doxology, is that right? Yeah. So I'm going to encourage us to sing the doxology with one another. Lord our God, we give you thanks for all that your church is able to give in this time of separation and economic hardship. May you use it for the building of your kingdom in this world and in the one to come. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, I think we sing another song. I think it's I Need Thee Every Hour. And yeah, I did pick all of this stuff, but I told you I'm tired. I did. And the one thing I can say is I'm picking all the stuff I like. And I kind of don't want to encourage you to tell me what you like. Because if I pick it, I know it. 
which is a whole other thing since I'm the one singing it for, with you. For you, I don't know, which one, whichever one you want to call it. But I'm going to encourage you, if you're able to turn in a hymnal to number th- 397. I got it, man. I got it. I promise. Mike was reminding me. Number 397. I, I need thee every hour. I sung that like I knew it instead of what was written in the book. Because they changed the words in our hymnal. And so if you memorized a different version of the song, I'm going to have to go look it up, but I'm pretty sure what I sang is the original, or the original words for that fourth verse. I forgot to do this, but uh, we've been working on trying to find ways to offer this service to those who cannot get online, and today was our first attempt at doing that. So if you're still with us by phone, Hi, I'm glad you could join us. It's amazing how much mental power it takes to come up with some solutions that, when I finally figure it out, seem like they ought to have been simple from the beginning, but none of it really is. And so I'm grateful that there are a number of us working on how to ensure that all the members of our congregation and whoever else happens to be joining us is able to receive God's message through this service. 
So may your prayer, like mine, be I need thee every hour. I need thee every hour, Lord, to enable me to be an example of your love, of your light in this world. And Lord, may you use each of us in our places, in our homes, and with those we are still in contact with, to be an example of your love, your light, your hands in your feet, God. We ask this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's try that refrain for I need thee every hour. Thank you.